Okay, so the next step in our conversation about resonance is a little sidebar here where we're going to talk about pattern recognition. In other words, there's five basic uh, bonding patterns that we see in resonance. This isn't something that you actually have to memorize. I, frankly, you wouldn't have to know it at all. This is just a sidebar to say, watch out for this. You're going to see patterns. And those patterns are going to end up giving you a great deal of comfort when you're doing resonance instruction, it's going to speed things up dramatically for you. So watch out for them. So the first pattern is an allylic lone pair. Let me come over here. Now, what's an allylic lone pair? Well, an allylic or a vinylic or allylic referred to the atoms of a pi bond and the next door that, that are next door to, um, well, let me say that again. Vinyl and allyl refer to the atoms of the pi bond and next door to the carbon carbon bond respectively, okay? So the vinylic position are these two positions, okay? And the allylic positions are these two, okay? So the first one we're talking about now is the allylic position, the type one, and that is if you have a lone pair of electrons that is allylic to a double bond. Can you see that? So the again, the allylic, uh, the allylic positions are one, the next door neighbor of the double bond, okay? So here are some allylic uh, Here's an allylic lone pair of electrons. It's allylic because it's right next door to that. You see that? Okay. Now, this is not allylic because it's got an sp3 hybridized. How do you spell H? Just a second here. It's got an sp3, a little bit slower here, hybridized carbon here, and an sp3 hybridized carbon here, right? So these electrons aren't going anywhere. But these guys are allylic, right? So now that we've introduced what allylic looks like, let's look at some examples of allylic resonance, all right? So again, we're in type one. This is the first type. If we have a lone pair of electrons here, you can see we can do it down here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through it with you up here, okay? Got this lone pair of electrons. It's allylic, right? Because it's next door to a double bond. And so what we can do is we can bring those here and those up here, right? And that's what's going on here, okay? Same thing here. Do you see a lone pair of electrons that are allylic to a double bond, right? So those can go here and these can get pushed up, okay? Same thing here, double bond, allylic electrons, boom and boom, right? Double bond, allylic lone pair of electrons. Watch this, boom and boom, okay? And again, another a double bond here, lone pair of electrons, watch this, boom and boom, okay? And so allylic lone pairs is the first example that we're going to look at. Now, um, let's look at when the, um, when the lone pair, let's see, when the allylic lone pair is, has a negative charge. When it has a negative charge, we saw this in the previous slide, these, these, these guys go over here, look at that, then this comes up here, and then that's going to put the lone pair over here, which is going to give you a negative charge, okay? So same thing goes here. If you have a lone pair and they go boom, we saw this in the previous page, these guys go up here, it's going to give you a negative charge, okay? Same thing, you've got neutrals here, right? Watch this. That comes down here, that comes up here, that's going to give you a negative charge, okay? By the way, since this was neutral, when it lost some of that share of electrons, it became a positive charge, right? So this is going to be super interesting to us as we do um, resonance structures. The fact that we're introducing charge here, this was neutral, we're introducing charge. Up here, we're just moving charge. Here, we're just moving charge, right? Those things are all going to be helpful to us as we evaluate structures. Okay, so that's type number one. Type two then looks, oops, whoa, it's type two. Type two is a little carbocations, right? So here's the next door to the double bond. So that's the allylic position, right? So when these electrons come over here, then they leave a partial charge, uh, not a partial charge, a positive charge in its wake, right? You see that? Now only one is needed because we don't have any electrons to push away up here, okay? So the same thing goes here. If there's multiple double, double bonds or conjugated, uh, a lot of biological systems conjugated, uh, then you're going to get some other possible movements, right? So these electrons come up here, mollify that plus charge, they leave a plus charge in its wake, and these electrons then say, hey, I can go there, there's an unhybridized p orbital right here. So I can go over here and boom, that's what we get. So this is awesome because we have three resonance structures that are available for this carbocation, which is gonna make it very stable. The fact that you have three resonance structures, that plus charge gets shared over that carbon, that carbon, 
and that carbon, right? So it's carbon one in this structure, carbon two, carbon three, I guess, in this structure, and carbon five in that structure. So that makes this this much more stable than just a regular old carbocation. We'll 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 be seeing much more of this in the next couple semesters. Okay. Now, here's another example of a lone pair that's adjacent to a carbocation. Oh, no, no, sorry. This is type 3. That's where a lone pair is, a, is a adjacent to a carbocation. So if I've got a lone pair up here and they come down here, boom, it mollifies that. You see that? Okay. Here's a carbocation and I've got a lone pair here. That means they can come here. And this is an sp2 hybridized carbon, uh, car, right? SP2, excuse me, an sp2 hybridized carbon and so that can make a double bond and that's exactly what happens the plus charge was here this oxygen then lost some of its share of the electrons and so in fact becomes a plus all right so next we have type number four that's where a pi bond between is a a pi bond moves between atoms of different electronegativity right so we've got this is the opposite of what we saw in the previous slide right so if you've got acetone here and you've got a very electronegative element, oxygen, then that oxygen says, hey, I want those bonding electrons more than you do. Why don't you give me my fair share of them? Or why don't you give me more than my fair share? And carbon is actually able to, right? Because it can move those guys up there, and this can be a carbocation in its wake. So this is another example, a pi bond between atoms of different electronegativities. These two re uh, structures represent the extreme positions of the pi bonded electrons. They're not equally shared right? Uh, the extreme positions of the pi bond electrons equally shared versus not shared. The, 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 uh, the actual compound is a hybrid of the two, which is there, which means that they're, the hybrid is not equally shared, okay? We're going to probe this a little bit more in a section coming up, okay? And then the fifth kind of uh, pattern that we're going to see is when you have conjugated pi bonds in a ring. This is super common. We generally don't get into this very much until chem, until organic 2, but this you can see I've got an sp2 hybridized carbon here, an sp2 hybridized carbon here, an sp2 hybridized carbon here, sp2 hybridized carbon, right? You see where I'm going with this, right? Those are all sp2s. And so there's no there's nothing keeping these electrons between these two guys. So in turn in fact they do. They move over, make the double bond. But when they do, they got to push these electrons off, right? And then, which is going to push these electrons off, and it turns out we don't have any charges that show up at all. So these pi bonds can be pushed around one position uh, to the next, clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter because, again, remember that the resonance structure says that these all are the same. These two structures are the same. The actual resonance hybrid of this compound is benzene, which looks like this, right? Dot, 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 right? Okay, so that's what the actual resonance hybrid looks like. And since none of these structures are charged, we don't even put partial charges on here. This is one reason why benzene is so stable, okay? All right, so now, in sum, the five patterns are when you have a lone pair of electrons that's allylic to a double bond, right? A carbocation that's allylic, all right? We have a lone pair of electrons that's next to a carbocation. And we have, uh, when we have a, a pi bond that's shared between two atoms of different electronegativities and also uh, double bonds that go around uh, in a ring, which we're going to call aromatic, a conjugated ring. All right. So I, I, I recommend that you do not memorize these right now. I just recommend you keep in the back of your mind that these patterns exist and you'll find that you begin to recognize the patterns and Developing resonance structures becomes much easier for you, and also evaluating them becomes much easier for you. Okay, good luck.